Hi, this is Mark Eccles from Google Cloud Zapigee. In the previous videos of this Edge Micro Gateway module, we went through the process of configuring TLS on the northbound and southbound connections. In this video, I'll cover some of the common issues that can occur when configuring Micro Gateway with TLS, and then show you how to troubleshoot and resolve them. In order to follow the tutorials in this video, you should already have an Apogee Edge account on either Edge for Private Cloud or Edge Cloud. You should also have gone through the previous videos in this module to gain familiarity with configuring one-way and two-way TLS on Edge Micro Gateway. In addition, you'll also need to have an operational instance of Edge Micro Gateway on which you are configuring TLS. To effectively troubleshoot TLS-related issues, I'll cover the fundamentals of TLS certificates. With certificate authority signed certificates, there is the concept of a certificate chain. This is an ordered list of certificates which enables the receiver to verify that the sender owns a certificate signed by trusted certificate authorities. The chain always starts with the LEAF certificate or the identity certificate, which represents the sender's identity. The LEAF certificate is followed by one or more intermediate certificates, and finally, a root certificate. Each certificate in the chain is signed by the issuer, identified by the next certificate in the chain. Certificate chains always terminate with a root CA certificate. The subject and issuer of the root certificate are always the same. The server must present the complete chain of its certificates during a one-way TLS handshake. In two-way TLS handshakes, both the server and client must present their respective certificate chains. This is the detailed structure of a TLS certificate, also known as an X509 certificate. X509 is the standard that defines the structure of these certificates. The example is that of a LEAF certificate. The subject common name has the name of a computer, user, network device, or service. For server-side certs, this is the host name used to connect to the server. Alternative subjects can be specified in the subject alternative names extension. In this example, the common name is apogee.net, and alternative names include subdomains of apogee.net. The subject also includes details about the organization and the locality of the owner. The issuer has the distinguished name of the signing certificate. For self-signed certs, the issuer may be the same as the subject. For CA signed certs, like in this example, the issuer is typically an intermediate cert, which in turn is issued by and signed by the root cert. The not before and not after date specify the certificate's validity period. Some types of certificates may call these fields by different names, such as begins and ends. The other fields are signature algorithm, public key, and serial number. The signature algorithm is used in the process of verifying the authenticity of the certificate. The public key is used in the actual key exchange process during the TLS handshake. Finally, the serial number is a unique number for the signing certificate authority. An X509 certificate can be stored in several different file formats. It's important to know that Edge Micro Gateway supports the PEM and PFX formats. With that knowledge under our belt, here are some of the common causes for TLS handshake failures. Expired certificate. This occurs when a certificate presented by the client or the server is expired. This happens when the not after date is in the past. Untrusted certificate. This occurs in three scenarios. Firstly, either the client or server presents a certificate chain that does not include a trusted certificate authority. Secondly, it will happen when an incomplete certificate chain is presented. Thirdly, this happens when one of the parties presents a self-signed certificate that the other party does not have in its trust store. No client cert provided. This occurs in a two-way TLS setup between client and server, where the server requests a client cert, but the client does not provide one. I'll now show you some demos of these problems. 
First up, expired certificate errors often occur when the team owning the certificates forgets to renew the certificates before they expire. If a target server certificate expires, clients will get a HTTP 502 bad gateway response with the error message, certificate has expired. Consider an API proxy called products that is configured to talk to a backend service with a host name of edgemicrodemo.com using one-way TLS. I will make a request to this API proxy using curl. Oops, we are getting the certificate has expired error. When Edge Micro Gateway encounters an error, it will generate a response in a standard format that includes the message and the code. This is how we know the error was generated by the Micro Gateway. In this case, it means that the target server is presenting an expired certificate. We can use the OpenSSL command line tool to verify that the target server is indeed presenting an expired TLS certificate. This command extracts the not before and not after dates of the target server's certificate. The connect argument specifies the address and port of the target, and the server name is the host name. This output confirms that the certificate expired in November 2019. This issue can be resolved by uploading the new certificate and private key to the target server's key store. As you have heard earlier in this video, untrusted certificate error can occur due to multiple causes. This error happens when one of the parties presents a self-signed cert that the other party doesn't trust. Consider an API proxy called contacts that is configured to communicate with another target server, also over one-way TLS. I will now make a call to this API proxy using curl. Oh no, we got a 502 bad gateway error again. This time the message says, self-signed certificate. This means that the micro gateway wasn't able to verify the leaf certificate presented by the target. By default, the micro gateway will trust only the certificates that are signed by well-known trusted certificate authorities. This time, we can use the OpenSSL command line tool to extract the subject and issuer of the certificate presented by the target server. The output confirms that the target server presented a self-signed leaf certificate. We know this because the issuer is the same as the subject. We also know that this isn't in our trust store. Therefore, this is the cause for failure. Now I'll add the self-signed cert to the micro gateway trust store by modifying the YAML file. I'll reload the Edge Micro Gateway and rerun the curl command to the API proxy. Wow, it's working now. By the way, I added the self signed certificate in a dev environment in this example. Be aware that we should only do this in non production environments. The best practice is to always use CA signed certs. No required client cert provided. 
This error occurs if the client doesn't present its certificate in a two-way TLS connection. In two-way TLS, both client and server are supposed to prove their identity by presenting their respective certificates. Consider an Edge Micro Gateway which is configured with northbound two-way TLS. The YAML configuration has request cert option set to true under SSL, along with the trusted client cert in PEM format. This means that the Micro Gateway expects the certificate to be presented by the clients on the northbound connection. I will now make a request to Edge Micro Gateway. Hmm, this is an error during the TLS handshake with the Edge Micro Gateway. Notice that the error response has a different format. This is because the error occurred on the northbound connection and it is returned by the curl command as opposed to Edge Micro Gateway in the previous scenarios. Be aware that the error response and the format can vary depending on the client application being used to make API calls. I will run the curl command with the verbose option to get more details about the error. The output shows that the micro gateway requested for the client cert, but it was never received. After this, the request fails with this error. Ah, of course, I forgot to configure the curl command to send the client certificates. So the cause for this error is that the client is not sending the certificates. I will make the curl request to Edge Micro Gateway again. Notice the difference this time. I am passing a path to the valid client certificate and key so that curl will send this in the TLS handshake. There you go. The northbound two-way TLS with Edge Micro Gateway now works fine. Keep in mind, when connecting to Edge Micro Gateway from any other client application, you are typically configure the key and certificate in a client key store. This concludes our troubleshooting video on TLS scenarios with Edge Micro Gateway. In this video, we did a recap of the basics of X509 certificates and certificate chains and demonstrated how to troubleshoot and resolve three of the most common scenarios for certificate-related problems in the Edge Micro Gateway. Thank you, and stay tuned for our upcoming videos.